I'm back with February's TBR and you guys know me by now you know I'm gonna at least try and devour my stacks I'm doing pretty good for <laughs> January but holy cow this stack is heavy. Eh? Huh? Wobbly? Your pizza has been delivered. Eh. Just kidding, I'll take this stack of books and um, be on my way. Hello fam, welcome back yet to another video. If you haven't already, you can tell by the title. We are now into February's TBR, and as always, like I said in the opening, I always have a stack. Do I tend to stick to that stack? Pretty close, but we do try. And then there's a few other books that I plan on getting to read also in February that haven't came out yet but I have a few pictures to show you what they are and I will give a description because hmm, both sound good one is a mermaid retelling and another one is about queens and assassins and hmm, that's really all I need to know and it's by Melissa D.L. Cruz like I love the descendant books by her so that one might be a go for me. We don't know yet. We'll, well, we, I kind of read the description about it, but it's been a little while. But we'll circle back to that at the end. But for now, let's just jump into my stack here that we've got. Because it is a great one. I think. But that's just me. Now, the first book... I don't know if it's the first one I will get to, but it's the one that I keep seeing on shelves, and I already have it, and I can't remember if it's Alcrate or Fairy Loop that did, like, the cool edge vibe onto this book. It's like, oh my god. It's like, I want to paint it like that. I might end up doing that. I don't know yet, but it depends on if I like it first. It sounds promising, but that book would be Blood Air by Amelia Winzahu. I'm sorry if I pronounced that completely wrong, but we do try on this channel, so forgive me. But I'm going to read the back because I don't want to know anything on the inside that might, or might give it away more, but I like reading the back, so rebels over here. Alright, all I know is this. A princess with a deadly gift. A con man with a no past and no future. An empire spiraling into chaos. It's time to choose a side. And that is all we're going to know about Blood Air. And like I said, I've been seeing this one all over on BookTube. And oh my goodness. I don't know if you can see that with it being black, but... The, oh, and it's on the back too. I like that. Oh, the design it has on the book. And my other books just attacked me. This video is turning out great so far. We love it. We're keeping it. I'm not deleting this clip. Oh, alright. But anyway, as I said before, the books attacked me. I've been seeing this book around for people unboxing, and like I said, it has like the red pages up here with the red little drips on the side and I'm just like my copy doesn't have that me want that me might do that eventually but like I said I want to read at least 50 pages in and then see if you know I want to go ahead and give that a go because you never know might so I guess stick around for next month to see if I do do that we'll see all right Fixing the books that fell. <laughs> the next book I really want to jump into, and again, I heard a little bit of hype of it last year. Got it. I haven't gotten around to it, but this year, 
this year we're going to try to get around to some of the hype books. Not all of them, but the majority of the ones that I'm interested in. And this one, I am. And again, we're going to read a little bit of what it's about, but not the whole thing to give it away. But that is Fair, or Fair, Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. And on the back of all it says, today it begins. Today we will rise. Give a little bit of a sneak peek on the inside, not too much. Annie and Lee were just children when a brutal revolution changed their world, giving everyone, even in the low-born, a chance to test into the governing classes of dragon writers. Like, you had me at dragon on the cover, and you had me at dragon writers on the inside. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Now they are both rising stars in the new regim, despite backgrounds that couldn't be more different. Annie's low-born family was executed by Dragonfire, while Lee's architect family was murdered by revolutionaries. And I'm going to leave it at, at that. There was no harm in the, in the book. Uh, sorry. Anyway, that is all I'm going to give the description for Fireborn, but like I said, it sounds really good. This is about dragons. It sounds like there may or may not be a little bit of romance in this. And since this month is all about, well, not technically all about love, but you gotta have your little bit of romance in your book. Not always, but you know, a little bit's okay. And then, this may or may not be a group pick for Spook Squad book club that I'm a part of. I'm one of the co-hosts to it. It's really fun. And we just did our February poll. And this book I'm holding my hand looks like it's winning by a landslide. So, I have a feeling it's going to be this book. And that... Hopefully will be A Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dio. And I really can't remember what this one is basically described as, so I'll read the back. Designated for greatness. Bound for ruin. Exfine is beautiful. The cards foretell her fate. She is meant to be express of all thing Lu, but only she embraces the darkness buried deep within her soul. Down one path lies obscurity, the other leads to glory, yet not without great sacrifice. A lover spurned, cruel magic exploded, one question, one choice. Regines above all others is the price of the throne too high? And of course, another one of these books that have a snake on the cover. Uh, love that. Yeah, we're moving on. But like I said, that may or may not be the group pick, but. I have it down for on the TBR, so reading it regardless. Anyway, the next book I got the audio for, so I'm just waiting until it's February so I can listen to it. And we all know about Harry Potter. We don't need to get too much detail into it, but it is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling. Like I said, I'm not going to give a description for it because Harry Potter's been around for a very long time. And just, that's all we need to know about Harry Potter. I'm sorry. He, it's just a magical world. And he's the boy who lived. What more do you need to know about Harry Potter? Sorry, but that is all I got to say. <laughs> Alright, and then again, I am going to be reading the sequel to... I am number four because I really loved the, the movie and I really loved the book and I want to know what happens in the second one because there's not a second movie 
sad. But I want to know how the story continues. So I will be reading The Power of Six by Pactictus Lore. I think that's how you say their name. But they are getting closer. They are tracking us. They know about the charm. They know about our legacies. They know too much for us to believe. We will ever be safe again. We must find each other. We must unite. We must fight and we must win. We are the last defense. Yes. And all I'm hoping for is John and that the girl six. I can't remember what her name is. I don't think they said her name. <laughs> to be honest, they just called her six. But hopefully her and John, like I said, find the rest of them with the powers and they take down the bad aliens because they want to kill these kids that did nothing wrong. And it's just, ugh. I like it. It's very sci-fi and mm, we're trying to get into more sci-fi stuff this year too, so love that for me. And speaking of a second book, if you haven't seen the pattern here, anyway, I'm so excited to revisit this world. I read the first, reread the first book in January, so I'm going to continue on with the series. And that is Wolfsbane by Andrea Creamer. And we're just following Kala into the second book. And oh, it's just, it's, I, I love it. I'm one of those people. Oh. Alright. When Kala Tor wakes up in the lair of the searchers, her sworn enemies, she's certain her days are numbered. But then the searchers make her her an offer, one that gives her the chance to destroy her former masters and save the pack and the man she left behind. Is Ren worth the price of her freedom? And will Shay stand by her side no matter what? Now in control of her own destiny, Kala must figure out which battles are worth fighting and how many trails True love can endure and will survive. And that is Wolfsbane. This is the second book. And oh, I haven't read this series since like 2012. So revisiting and I'm loving every minute of it. And did I also mention that she's a werewolf? Hmm. -mm. Those few things don't have you hooked, I don't know what will. But moving on, the next book I really need to get into, it's been a long time. I read the first book last year, never got around to the second one yet, but since I read the first one last year in February, it seemed only right to read the second book also in February. I don't know if any of that makes sense, but we're rolling with it. But I will finally be picking up Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. Cause I love the first one. I love Kaz Brecker. I just love the whole crew, and I really need to know what happens if they get NG back, and how he kissed her back. Like, what is happening, Kaz? Please tell me. But Jasper tapped his fingers red restlessly. Has anyone noticed this whole city is looking for us, mad at us, or wants to kill us? So? said Cass. That is so typically Cass. So? <laughs> well, usually it's just half the city. <laughs> I love Jesper. He's... It, between him and Cass, they're both honorary and very sarcastic. Well, Jasper's not so typically sarcastic, but Kaz kind of is, and mm, we love that tropes. I don't know why, but we do. And then, if I have time, I would like to get into the second book of the Diviner series after I finish the first one, and then hopefully jump into Layer of Dreams. Some dreams 
your life for other dreams kill that's all it says on the back I don't want to read the inside because mm, spoilers and like I said I'm halfway through the first one so I don't want to give too much away alright and then the last two books that aren't quite out just yet but come out February 4th that I'm looking forward to which is this book that I mentioned the Queen's Assassin Calden Hall is the Kingdom of Renevo's deadli deadliest weapon. No one alive can best him in bronze or brains, which is why he's the Glide's most dangerous member of the Queen's one and only assassin. He is bound to the Queen by an impossible vow. To find the missing Dejan Scrolls, the Fault of all magical history and knowledge stolen years ago by a nefarious sect called the Aprixens. Sh Shadow has tr has been training her all her life to follow in the footsteps of her mother and aunts to become skilled enough to join the ranks of the Glide. Though magic has been forbidden since the Aspirin's uprising, Shadow has been learning to control her powers in secret, hoping that one day she'll become an assassin as feared as revered as Keldon Holt. When a surprising attack brings Shadow and Cal together, they're forced to team up an assassins and appreciants to hunt down a new sinister threat to Renovia. But as Cal and Shadow grow closer, they'll uncover a shocking web of lies and secrets that may destroy everything they hold dear. With the war on the horizon and true love at risk, they'll stop at nothing to protect each other and their kingdom in this stunning first novel of the Queen's Secret series. Now that sounds really good. And then the last one I have that also comes out on February 4th is All Stars and Teeth. All I know about this one is that it's um, Mermaid's Telling, and it's by Adlin Grace, and the cover looks freaking gorgeous, I'm not gonna lie. Alright. Set in a kingdom where danger lurks beneath the sea, mermaids seek vengeance with a song, and magic is a choice. Alan Grace's All the Stars and Teeth is a thrilling fantasy for fans of Stephanie Graber's Carval and Sarah J. Mass, Throne the Glass series. She will rejuvenate as a princess of the island of the kingdom. Vista Amora Montara has spent her entire life in training to be high act animal maxer the master of soul sorry is words uh, the rest of the realm can choose their magic but for amora it's never been a choice to secure her place as heir up to the throne she must prove her mastery of the monarchy's dangerous soul magic when her demonstration goes awry Amora is forced to flee. She strikes a deal with Bastion, a mysterious pirate. He'll help her prove she's fit to rule. If she, if she'll help him reclaim his stolen magic, but sailing the kingdom holds more wonder and more pure than holds more wonder and more pure than Amora anticipated. Wow, sorry, I just reread that twice. That's my bad, guys. A destructive new magic is on the rise. If Amora is to conquer it, she'll need to face legendary monsters, cross paths with the vengeful mermaids, and deal with a stowaway 
she never expected or risk the fate, fate of Vazita and lose her lose the crown forever. I am the right choice, the only choice, and I will protect my kingdom. And again, that is all the stars and teeth. And there you guys have it. That is my February's TBR. Are we going to get it to all these books? We hope so, but if not, that is definitely okay. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that like button. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're not already. And so, and hit the notification bell so you'll get emails from me from whatever I post. Which I try to do, you know, but sometimes, you know, life happens. That's all I gotta say. But anyway, that is all I have for today's video. And I will see you guys in my next one. Whatever that will be. Alright, I hope you guys are having a good day or, or night, wherever you are in the world. And as always, get unexpected reading in because why not? And like I keep saying, I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye! Hi guys, oh, um, I am going to quickly, um, future editing me here, I forgot to mention another book that I'm going to be also trying to read in February, and that is Seven Blades in Black by Sam Skies, and this sounds really good, I've gotten a little ways into it, but not too much. But, her magic was stolen, she was left for dead, betrayed by those she trusts most, and her magic ripped from her. Sal the Cataphony has nothing left but her name. Her story, the weapon she used to carve both, but she has a will stronger than magic and knows exactly where to go. The Scar is a land torn between powerful empires where rogue mages go to disappear, disgrace, soldiers go to die, and Sal goes with a blade, a gun, and a list of seven names. Like, it sounds amazing. The cover, not really loving it. Like, I'm trying to get used to it. But, like, the story within it, though, sounds really good. I've heard a little bit from Pure 4 talking about this book, so that's what had my interest in it a little bit. And it is a big, thick beast, like most of the books I have are. But you know what? One more added to my February's TBR, because like I said, I forgot to mention this book. And, oops. But now I have my copy of it so I can get the library's copy back and uh, I can take my sweet time reading this big boy and uh, don't have to worry about returning it because it, this one's mine. I like it. I don't know why we're like. <laughs> but anyway, that is The Seven Bleeds in Black and that is all I have for this short little ramble clip. So. There's that fun thing, so yay! Alright, I will talk to you guys soon. Goodbye!